Okay, this is one of those videos. I guess I have to start with a video. In this case, this. Bugs flying around the light. Something that I'm sure most of us are quite familiar with. As a matter of fact, as mentioned in the study we're going to be discussing today, apparently insects being attracted to artificial light was even mentioned in some of the earliest writing in the Roman Empire. So naturally this is something that existed with us for as long as humans were able to produce light. Apparently Romans even used this to trap bugs in order to catch them. But despite the famous expression, drawn like a moth to a flame, and despite this being one of those things we probably don't really think about, what exactly is happening here? And well, we now have an official answer. And it's maybe not a happy answer. It's actually somewhat depressing. At least it didn't really make me particularly happy once the scientists explained the actual mechanism. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a relatively recent study that as always you can find in the description below with a simple title, Why Flying Insects Gather at Artificial Light. Something that was initially started a few years back and something that now has a very good and very official confirmation, with a very obvious answer being, no, the insects are not attracted to light at all, even though it obviously appears as they fly around the light. And so let's discuss this unusual phenomenon in a little bit more detail and I guess talk about what this means for insects in general. And obviously this is not the first time researchers try to answer this. As a matter of fact, a lot of previous propositions tried to explain this in a lot of different ways. For example, maybe insects were drawn to light through some kind of a escape mechanism. Or basically they saw the light as streaks of sunlight between foliage and were flying toward it in order to escape. This would be some kind of an innate response that seems to be present in a lot of different insects. But this turned out to be not correct. Other suggestions involved the moon. And so maybe in some of the night insects, they often mistaken the artificial light for the light coming from the moon that they might use for navigation. And so they would fly toward it, thinking it's the moon, but it turned out to be some kind of a lamp. But this explanation was a little bit too simple, because we don't really see insects flying toward the moon either. Then some researchers propose that maybe it's the heat. Maybe the insects are just attracted to warmth coming from the light. But this was disproven when similar effects were observed with LED lights, which don't produce enough heat detectable by insects. And lastly, there was a proposition that, well, maybe they're actually blinded by the light and end up being confused flying in strange patterns, basically crashing into the lamp because they just can't see anything. And though these were all, I guess, very reasonable explanations, they just didn't really have enough evidence to prove any of this, especially because there was a lot of counter evidence. And so in order to uncover exactly what's going on here, the researchers used something brilliant. Okay, they actually just used a light. But on top of this, they used an extremely fast camera able to film everything in slow motion. And then they used different lights by placing them in different types of locations and also in different orientations. Just to see how various insects, especially moths that are known for this, would react in the process. And one of the first discoveries they made was that, yeah, none of the insects were actually aiming at the light at all. It even appeared as if they were not doing anything special, as if they were just flying straight. And so basically, in their insect brains, they were not reacting to anything, they were just doing their own thing. But what ended up happening was that they were changing directions. Unconsciously. Okay, I guess the word unconsciously is maybe not the right word to use because we don't really know if they have consciousness, but you know what I mean. This was an instinctual behavior. They were instinctually changing direction when extremely close to the light. And this was usually done in three separate ways. Orbiting behavior, stalling behavior, or sometimes inverting behavior. And all of this depended on the orientation of the light. And this was a giveaway or a very important clue to what's actually happening here. The researchers realized that it was basically their instinctual behavior, sometimes referred to as dorsal light response. Something that scientists have been studying for a very long time and something that we know exists in a lot of different animals. Here's an example from fish. And dorsal light response is a type of an instinct. It's an automatic response that causes insects to change direction depending on the light source. An instinct that evolved to respond to the sun and the moon. And so basically under normal light conditions, insects automatically turn their back toward the light. In a lot of different flying insects, especially pollinating insects, this is a way to control flight attitude. Or basically the control of the angle compared to Earth's horizon 
in order to conduct accurate flight. And this instinct very likely evolved just to help insects determine where the up and down was. Obviously to make flying much easier. And so in other words, they can sense the light with their back. And they're also able to correct their attitude based on the time of the day by sensing the brightest source in the sky. Naturally, this is something that evolved over hundreds of millions of years. And then in the last few thousands of years, they suddenly discovered that sometimes the sun and the moon are not the only sources. Sometimes something else becomes the brightest source. And their instinct kicks in, forcing their poor bodies to reorient themselves toward the light. Or basically to reorient their back toward the light. As a result, it starts to appear as if they're orbiting the light source, even though they're not really trying to do this at all. It's their body trying to reassess where the up and down is. Constantly. For hours. And they can actually keep doing this for a very long time until something suddenly, accidentally snaps them out of it. But in their head, or I guess in their tiny brains, they're not doing any of this. They're just trying to fly straight. And they have no idea they're flying in circles or that they're somehow confused. Except for the fact that sometimes they bump their heads without really understanding what's going on. And so unfortunately, artificial light seems to directly interfere with a lot of their orientation instincts, including things like gravity, sending a lot of mixed messages, confusing poor moss, or basically any other insect, forcing them to fly in a lot of hectic ways. With all of this directly confirmed and directly observed by taking slow motion pictures of individual insects around individual light sources. And so after approximately 500 different recordings, they've essentially observed the same thing over and over. Every insect was repeating the same patterns and appeared disoriented, creating unusual spirals they did not want to create. And the only time the insects escaped was if something accidentally kicked them out of there, for example wind. And once they discovered this, they actually wanted to test, okay, which of these scenarios is the worst? Turns out that if you have overhead light, it's slightly better than having light that's coming from underneath. And so here, if you have the light coming from underneath, it basically causes a total inversion, with insects spiraling toward the ground and potentially getting stuck in this behavior for a very long time. Which is a really intriguing discovery when it comes to, I guess, the idea of light pollution. And because a lot of these insects are pollinators or are essential for the biosphere of the planet, this is potentially a somewhat unnerving and a somewhat disturbing discovery. The discovery that our artificial lights may create a lot of issues for a lot of insects that develop these dorsal instincts over millions of years. But according to the researchers, one way we could maybe help them is by trying to reduce upward facing lights as much as possible. The downward lights, like the one right here, are not as bad, but the upward lights seem to be the worst. Although the best solution would be obviously to reduce lights altogether. And so ever since I read the study, I don't think I'll ever be able to see this the same way. Something that we always imagined as some kind of an attraction for a lot of these poor insects turned out to be their hell. They're literally just stuck doing this over and over and they can't help themselves. They're trying to fly straight, they're trying to get away, they can't. They're trapped by a tiny artificial light on our porch. But this is of course just one of many human-based disturbances that seem to create problems for these super important bugs. As you might know, approximately 90% of all of the crops we depend on also kind of depend on these little guys. Quite a lot of them are pollinators and quite a lot of them are also responsible for protecting our crops in a lot of other ways. But they can't really do that if they're stuck flying around a lamp. With the conclusion being that it's maybe better not to leave so many lights on outside, especially since light pollution causes a lot of other problems as well. But this is maybe something we'll discuss sometime later. At least for now, a very intriguing discovery, once again a somewhat maybe depressing discovery because we now know that the insects here are basically trapped, but also a really important discovery that one day might change policies around the planet in order to reduce the overall light effects from various artificial sources. Something that I'm sure we'll learn more about in some of the future studies. But actually even in this study, there were some additional intriguing discoveries. For example, certain flies, such as vinegar flies, or certain types of moths, like this one right here, known as oleander hawk moth, surprisingly were not affected by upward lights, but were trapped by other types of lights, just like other insects. So there seems to be quite a lot of variation in terms of the instinctual abilities, but exactly how we can apply this to help the insects, we don't really know yet. At the same time, 
the scientists still don't understand why insects don't perform similar orbiting maneuvers when looking toward the moon, for example. So there might be something about artificial lights that forces their dorsal instincts to kick in. It would also be really intriguing to find out if the colors matter, and more specifically, if certain types of lights do this more actively than other lights, because this means that we can maybe adjust the lighting, helping insects not to get trapped. Either way though, until future studies or until more discoveries on this topic, at least for now it looks like all of these bugs are still going to be trapped for quite some time. But once we have some more details or more analysis, I'll follow this up in the next video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.